Recently, social media has been buzzing with claims that strange insects invaded the Islamic praying ground and enroached on the grave of Islam's Prophet Muhammad after a heavy downpour in Mecca. The insects swarming the Kaaba in Mecca have caused consternation among Muslims worldwide. While some sources claim the insects were cockroaches, others believe they were crickets or locusts. Most believe they are locusts. Everyone is wondering what exactly happened. Is this simply a natural phenomenon? Some view the insect invasion at Mecca's Kaaba as a sign from Jesus and maybe a sign of judgment for Muslims. But before we delve deeper, let me ask you a question about the Kaaba. In Islamic tradition, the one believed to have built the sacred stature known as the Kaaba in Mecca is Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ishmael. The cube-shaped monument, constructed from black granite, holds immense significance for Muslims as a place of worship, dedicated to their god Allah. Mecca, the birthplace of Muhammad, holds a special place in the Islamic religion and has played a central role in the development of the Muslim faith and practice. Situated in modern-day Saudi Arabia, Mecca is considered the holiest city for Muslims. The Hajj, one of the five pillars of Islam, requires every Muslim to undertake a mandatory pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. Additionally, Mecca serves as the focal point for Islamic prayer. Since the time of Muhammad, Muslims all over the world have faced Mecca when praying. The structure of the Kaaba has been rebuilt and repaired many times due to conflicts and natural disasters. The current Kaaba is a cube made of polished black stone and is located in the center of the Masjid al-Haram, a massive mosque. During the Hajj pilgrimage, Muslims must march around the Kaaba several times as part of a ritual similar to the pre-Islamic pagans. Some people believe that natural causes such as the rainy season and vegetation growth stimulate the spread of locusts, which can be found in the two holy mosques due to the high temperature and humidity. However, others believe that there is a spiritual story behind the insect attacks as locusts are often seen as symbols of divine wrath and destruction in the Bible. In the book of Exodus, the eighth plague that God unleashed upon Egypt was a swarm of locusts. That was a part of a series of plagues that were sent to convince Pharaoh to release the Israelites from slavery. The Lord instructed Moses to stretch out his hand over Egypt, causing the locusts to swarm over the land and devour everything in their path, including the crops that have survived the previous hailstorm. Moses obeyed and an east wind blew across the land, bringing the locusts with it. The insects settled down and in every area of the country causing widespread devastation. This was just one of several plagues that God had already sent upon Egypt, each one more severe than the last. Despite witnessing these miracles, Pharaoh remained stubborn and refused to release the Israelites. The locust plague was a symbol of divine judgment and represented the severity of God's wrath upon a disobedient nation. These verses serve as a reminder of the consequences of pride and defiance in the face of God's will. The locusts were a display of God's power reminding us of the limits of human control and the face of divine authority. However, it's important to note that God also showed patience creating 10 disasters to give Pharaoh a chance to reflect on his actions and free the Israelites. Whether we choose to follow God or not is our right, but we must remember that there are consequences for turning away from him. The metaphor of a locust invasion in Joel's words serve as a powerful reminder of the devastating impact of sin and disobedience, calling us to repentance. The locust devastation is compared to the consequence of sin and the repeated consumption by different stages of locusts represent the compounding effects of disobedience. The message is clear. People are urged to turn away from their sinful ways, seek forgiveness, and reconcile with God. The passage emphasizes the accountability individuals bear for their actions. The progressive consumption by different locust stages highlights the cumulative impact of unaddressed wrongdoing. Each layer of locust represents a layer of consequences, emphasizing the idea that effects of sin can intensify if not addressed promptly. 
Joel's message is both a warning and an opportunity for redemption. While the Loctus invasion signifies the gravity of the situation, it also opens a pathway for repentance and a return to God. The devastation described serves up as a wake-up call, inviting people to acknowledge their transgressions and seek forgiveness before the consequences become insurmountable. We should reflect on the destructive nature of sin and the importance of taking responsibility for our own actions. It encourages us to recognize the cumulative impact of disobedience and to respond with repentance, seeking God's forgiveness and mercy. In the book of Revelation, Loctis are mentioned multiple times, but their description is given in a symbolic and apocalyptic context. These Loctis are referred to as the scorpions of the earth and are given power. John, the author, states that they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, which implies that all the green grass was burned up. The word earth can have various meanings, ranging from a specific land like Israel to a larger portion or even the entire earth. Therefore, the destruction caused by the locusts could be localized to a particular area where all the grass is burned up. The term grass can be interpreted both literally and figuratively. In the book of Revelation, the locusts are portrayed as having a leader and being on a specific mission. They are given orders and are commanded to not harm any green thing or tree. The mention of green signifies life, health and vigor the green trees may represent people in positions of rule and authority while the green grass could symbolize the general population the reference to other green things could extend to animals from pets to livestock however it is important to note that these interpretations are speculative and it is difficult to be certain about the exact events described the contrasting words in the verse state that only those who do not have the seal of god on their foreheads will be affected this suggests that those who are alive and healthy, metaphorically represented by the green things, are the ones being referred to. The presence of the seal of God act as a protective measure for these individuals. Locusts by nature are created that devour the greenery of the earth. It is their instinct to do so, and it would be against their very essence if they were to refrain from it. However, in an interesting twist, these locusts are commanded to act in a manner that goes against their usual behavior. This particular phenomenon is mentioned in chapter 7, where the seal of God is associated with the 144,000 of Israel. The seal is placed on their foreheads distinguishing them from the others. It seems though the trumpet judgments as described in chapter 8 are specifically targeted towards the land of Israel. Within Israel there are both redeemed Jewish believers in Christ and those who have not yet accepted him. It is the latter group, the unsealed ones, who are the primary focus of these locusts. This could be because this sealed individual that are protected regardless of their belief while the unsealed ones are vulnerable to a locust effect. It is worth noting that during this time of trial, even those who have not yet embraced faith and Christ can find grace and protection if they come and repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The sealed and unsealed individuals coexist in the land and both are shielded from the full wrath of the locusts. In the end, when the tribulation concludes, the nation of Israel as a whole will recognize Jesus as their Lord. It is at this moment that he will return. Until then, the nation will endure numerous trials and hardships as their hardened hearts prevent them from seeking the undeniable truth that Jesus Christ is their Lord, King, Savior, and Messiah. Until later, they are completely disoriented and lost. However, just like the unsaved individuals we pray for worldwide, they find themselves so surrounded by hatred and hostility. It is crucial to remember to pray for the nation of Israel and its people, who are constantly surrounded by nations that despise them. Unfortunately, things will get worse before they improve. But fear not, for the day will come when Jesus returns and establishes his magnificent kingdom among them. The recent appearance of locusts at the Kaaba could potentially be a sign of God's judgment and imminent return. The burning question remains, who will face judgment? Every single individual, both living and deceased, 
throughout the history of humanity will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So this is a very serious situation. Even Satan and the fallen angels will be brought into the presence of the judge as affirmed by the word of God. On that day, everything will be laid bare. Our words, motives, thoughts, actions, and attitudes will be exposed. If we are in Christ and have died in him, have our souls not already been transported to the heavenly presence of Jesus? Why is it necessary for us to appear before Christ on the day of judgment? There is no doubt about our eternal destiny, but we must understand God's purpose is bringing believers to stand before Christ on that great day. Hey. We are all destined to appear before the judgment seat of Christ where each one will receive the consequences of their actions whether good or bad. This is a significant event, not the first time it has occurred. In 2019, a similar incident took place, indicating that it is not a normal occurrence. We need to focus on analyzing and understanding why it is happening. After heavy rains, it is natural for small flying insects to rise up. Some insects come out due to damage to their homes caused by flooding, while others take advantage of the perfect breeding conditions. Certainly, we cannot deny the significance of this reason. However, it is equally important not to overlook the spiritual things that God presents to us. As mentioned in the Bible, no one knows the exact day or hour of his return, not even the angels or the Son, but only the Father. Therefore, we must remain vigilant and attentive to the signs that he sends us, preparing ourselves for the momentous event. The biblical accounts of locust swarms can be seen as divine messages and actually are urging humanity to repent and turn to God. In these times of uncertainty, it is crucial for believers in Christ to find solace and guidance in the word of God. The locust invasion serves as a reminder for us to reflect on the spiritual significance of such events. By studying the biblical stories of locust plagues, we can find inspiration to seek God and eagerly await the return of Jesus. Despite the challenges we face on our journey, let us draw strength from the example set by God, who endured the crown of thorns and carried the weight of the cross for the salvation of humanity. <clears throat> The challenges we face may seem small in comparison to the immense trials that God preserved through. It is a reminder that we too can overcome our struggles by navigating life's hurdles with steadfastness and resilience. By doing so, we prepare ourselves to welcome the return of our Lord with fortified hearts and unwavering faith. Let us be inspired by God's sacrifice and face our struggles with courage and determination knowing that through our endurance we align ourselves with the divine purpose and the promise of a brighter future. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let us surrender all things to God and ask that strength to fight our battles, following Him on the path to eternal life. Join us in communion and share your thoughts and prayers below. Remember, God is listening and sending signs of His return. Let us not only prepare ourselves, but also help others prepare, including those who have not strayed from God. We are on the path towards God's light and He doesn't want us to go alone. Dear Heavenly Father, as I witness the signs of your imminent return, I humbly come before you, seeking your guidance and strength, because we know that you're the only way unto heaven. I ask for your help in understanding these signs, for the courage to prepare our hearts and the viewers' hearts for your glorious presence. Please keep us steadfast on the path that leads us to your divine light, shielding us from distractions and doubts along the way. I beseech you to accompany us on this journey, dear Lord, and may your grace be my constant companion, drawing me closer to you with each step I take. In my prayers, I also remember my, brethren, my brothers and sisters, especially those who may have been lost along their way. I implore you to shower them with your kindness, revealing the signs of your return and illuminating their hearts. Guide them back to the path of goodness, granting them the strength to face challenges and the wisdom to recognize your call. And your boundless, infinite love, lead us all hand in hand towards your glorious presence. May we support one another on this sacred road, journeying together as a united family. Father, I thank you for your unwavering faithfulness and keeping every promise to your people. Israel, even now, I trust in your watchful eye over them, protecting and guiding them. With heartfelt gratitude and unwavering faith, I offer this prayer to you, my Heavenly Father. Amen.